All praise to the only source that we are part of, and that is within us. It is everywhere and nowhere because you can't see it and surround us all things. So I'm, I'm going to help folks out with the story of the book of, 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 of the story of Adam. And if you read the book of Adam 1 and 2, you find out that the Adam they're talking about is the fallen one, Adam. As in Cain. But let's get straight to it. The book of Adam lets you know that Adam, their Adam, because our Adam, they talking about that they're talking about if our Adam is just energy, a molecule, which is liquid, that appears to be solid, something that is real, that seems real, but is not real, but seems real. Like one of the teachers said in one of the way older books. But the Adam they talking about is a, is a flesh Adam. An Adam who was not of our creed. An Adam who was going to cause trouble all around the world. This guy killed himself at least four or five times, jump off a ledge and all this other stuff. Now they mix in a whole different type of story with it to try to make it seem like he was good and all this other crazy stuff. When you get down to it in that story, further down in that story, the book of Adam, Adam tells, Adam asked the devil, and this, Adam does, does not realize it's the devil, because of course that's his daddy. He thinks it's the most high in the flesh because he didn't know any better, right? Now this is after they fall it. After they fall the devil comes again in a whole different type of form, right? Of one of his buddies who looks different and turns around and tells him that he is the one that died for the, for his sins, for, the, for everybody's sins, and pretends to be the most high. Now, we know one of the rules is that nobody can die for your sin, and the energy source will not even honor that. That you are responsible for your own sins, and everybody has died over and over again for their own sins. Hopefully, learn a lesson so they ain't got to die this natural death no more. Everything get back in order. So when you quote the Adam and Eve story, realize that you're not talking about our people. You're talking about the fallen ones, Adam. Because when the energy source created an Adam, an Adam, a Adam, not Adam and man, but a atom as in a liquid energy form that appears to be solid, but it's not. Hence, your body, what they call a soul, because your body is the soul, and you are the energy that lives in it. It's talking about you, the energy. The energy that lives in the soul. <laughs> the energy is what it, it transferred, not even created. And energy is hot. It's hotter than fire, all the time. You go ahead and you touch a live wire and you see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not saying to go do that, don't do that. But if you was to, you understand what I mean. It'll cook you from the inside out. And you won't stand a chance. And once it latches on to you, it's not letting you go. Somebody got to literally come along and take a stick and hit you really hard to knock you off the damn thing. Or hit that thing hard to knock it off for you. And it better not be a metal pipe or anything because then they're getting fried too. This is why they show these comic books of our people with electricity powers and stuff like that. They know. They don't want you to know. They want you to buy into the Adam story. And the sad things when you read the book of Adam, especially for those who's in these camps, it tricks you to make you think that somebody died for your sin. Mr. J and that bullshit, which is a lie, because that's the devil. And then y'all want to sort of say, well, some of y'all feel as though, you know, remember what Mr. J done for us. Mr. J didn't do anything for us except for conquer and help conquer, give advice on how to conquer our people and conquer our people. 
and that's the person, Mr. Day, you're talking about was a big head mad scientist known as Yakuv. That y'all calling all these other names. The one that everybody's waiting to come down from the sky, Yakuv, who was a Nephilim fallen one, who had war with other fallen ones because they all beefed with each other and also came against us. Made a man who was not of our creed, as in, quote, Atom, mm -hmm, to come along and cause problem with us. Jacob's trouble is actually Yaku's trouble. Yaku's trouble is the trouble that Yaku put on this earth to come against all melanated people. You get it now? Now we are not in Yaku's trouble or Jacob's trouble, as they like to say it. And we, of course, they mix that up because that you see how the back fuck we's on that. We are in whose trouble? Their trouble. It's just that if you're living in the cities, you are amongst them, and therefore, you deal with the bullshit. Because you're there. Versus, versus you getting out the cities as they fallen, you don't have to deal with a lot of bullshit. You know, the only thing you got to be concerned about besides working and get money is the main thing is growing food and storing it away and canning goods and stuff like that. So that when they do finally fall flat on their face and flat on their back, and the whole thing goes crazy. And they, trust me, they're all going to get crazy. You need to get weaponry and train and all this other stuff so you can get prepared to protect with yours because a lot of a lot of these people are not going to think the way you think. You know, you may think, which is the right way to think, would be I don't weaponize in case anybody tries to take it from me. But if anybody wants to share, we can share. They're not going to think like that. Because they're going to be desperate. They didn't have the mind to think caring for themselves in the first place. So the first thing they're going to think is to take yours. Some may say, you know what, yeah, let's work with them. And we'll help grow food with them and stuff like that. And we'll sit there and survive with them and not do anything bad. Because it's about survival. Some folks will get it, but most folks won't. So just realize what you're doing when you're talking about the Adam story. And that should clarify a lot of stuff up for you. And this is why I say you need to get into some of these tablets, ammo tablets, Sumerian texts, and all this other stuff. The deep things, because here's what's going on. It's going to straight tell you what's really going on. The fact is, you don't need nobody. That Sumerian text tells you that these demons are talking about when we figure out that we don't need them to get to the heaven, that everybody wants to so much be in. We don't need them for salvation. We don't need anybody for anything except the source that we are part of, which has no name because it's in us, because it's a part of us. It lives life, life through us. So what we have to do is realize we have to get that unity back and depend on each other. We literally have to get that unity back and depend on each other because all we need is each other. We can govern ourselves. We don't need their government. We don't need none of the stuff that they're doing. We need to take care of our stuff and do our thing. And I have to say it, because one thing that, that a lot of outside nations have been telling our people, and we've been going about it the wrong way, unfortunately, now we can do it the right way. Going, going at the wilderness and getting things ready. He tell you to pull, pull yourself up by a bootstrap. You know, if you try to do it their way, it's gonna be hard. Sometimes, but if you do it our way, everything falls in line. Uh, you'd be surprised. I'm going to just tell you right now, it don't take a lot of money. It just take enough. Peace and love. I love all of you. I'm signing out. I got to get to work. Got things to do. I can't mess around. Hope y'all learned something. Okay, if anybody wants to donate, I got a cash app and a PayPal. Donate, please. Anything that's donate will be used towards building, towards the building we're building, because we're doing a lot of work. And the greenhouse, or greenhouse city, multiple, about 20 of them. But for now, we're concentrating on five and finishing the one that's almost done. And getting everything else we need. Plumbing, pipe, all that stuff, you know. The whole nine yards. We're able to take showers and everything like that, so that's okay, but we're trying to get everything perfect the way that others would like it to be when they get here. You know, that's what we're trying to do.
And also, when all that's done, we want to have extra supplies, pipes, and everything else for water and everything else like that. So if something breaks, can we fix? And also, when others come, they're all going to want a house. Everybody's not going to want to be in the same houses. So everybody's got, some folks are going to want a house. If that's the case, we're going to need all that stuff. If we can get that stuff early before folks actually get here, so that it's sitting around for them, that'd be good. You know? But only certain things can sit around till you get here now. You can't leave plywood out in the open for long periods of time, or two by fours, or warp the wood. Metals and plastic can't leave be done like that. So you gotta remember, we can only get only so many supplies once we finish what so we gotta do for the people that's coming. So if you're talking about once we finish doing our part on certain things, and then we're telling you we need the money for your supplies, and you're talking about get, us getting wood, I wouldn't I wouldn't wait too long to come down soon after that. But if you're talking about getting pipes and stuff like that for your plumbing, uh, tanks for your water, that's different. But it's gonna take donations. I only make with so much. I can only do with so much. Again, peace and love to everybody.